And if there are minor congenital heart diseases, then there obviously must be some major ones as well. And I'm afraid there are. And I'm just going to mention you their names and just tell you a little bit about them. But you should essentially realize that the major congenital heart diseases are divided into two big groups. In one big group, our patient is cyanosed and blue. We have a blue baby. And in the other, our patient is not cyanosed and is not blue. So let me first, before I go on to talk to you about the major congenital heart diseases, let me just briefly explain to you why patients with congenital heart disease are blue. Or put in other words, why is it that a baby who's got a hole in the heart as big as this is not blue? Well, in order for me to do that, I need to talk to you very briefly about the basic anatomy of the heart. And I'm going to start by telling you that the heart is a pump, but it's actually two pumps and composed of four important chambers. The collecting chambers, the left and right auricles which sit on top of the heart, and the pumping chambers, the engines, the left and right ventricles. If you but to take a chest x-ray and look at the heart from the front, you will notice that the major piece at the front of the heart is formed by the right ventricle. The right ventricle that is pumping deoxygenated blood into the lungs for oxygenation. The right border of the heart is formed by the right collecting chamber, the right auricle. The left border of the heart is formed by the main pumping chamber, the main engine, the left ventricle. The left auricle is not visible from the front because it lies at the back of the heart. Now for simplicity, I want you to forget this anatomical arrangement. And I want you to build these four chambers in a square arrangement, in your minds. So that we have the right auricle and the right ventricle, and we have the left auricle and the left ventricle in a square arrangement. So that you can see that venous blood, dirty blood, is on the right side of the heart and clean arterial blood is on the left side of the heart. The right ventricle pumps that deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary arteries into the pulmonary circulation and into the lungs for oxygenation. All that clean oxygenated blood is then returned and collected by the left auricle. The left auricle then forwards it down to the left ventricle. The left ventricle is anxiously waiting to fill up. And upon doing so, pumps that oxygenated blood into the aorta. The aorta accepts the oxygenated blood and distributes it to the rest of the systemic circulation, the coronary artery, the subclavian, the carotid, the vertebral, and so forth and so on. And this is the normal situation we all have. Two hearts working together, hand in hand, side by side, day after day and night after night for the rest of your life. We are not blue because oxygenated blood is being pumped by the left ventricle into the aorta. So let's now take this situation. We now have a hole either between the auricles in the interauricular septum or we have a hole between the ventricles in the interventricular septum. I hope you can see that the oxygenated blood on the left side is at a far greater pressure than the deoxygenated blood on the right. We are dealing with systemic blood pressure. The pressure on the left side is perhaps four to five times greater. A hundred millimeters of mercury mean. And therefore, there will be a tendency for oxygenated blood to go from the left to the right. And the same will pertain with the atria. This we call an auricular septal defect. And this we call a ventricular septal defect. I hope you can see that this is not a normal situation. This is not a normal heart. There is a hole in this heart, but our patient is not blue because oxygenated blood is being pumped by the left ventricle into the aorta. Patients with an uncomplicated ASD or an uncomplicated VSD are not blue. 
So what makes our baby blue then? Well, two things. Here we have our hole in the heart again, but here we've done something on the right side that is going to increase the pressure on the right side. And that something is to stenose the pulmonary arteries. In particular, the pulmonary valves. So these patients have congenital pulmonary stenosis. That increases the pressure on the right side of the heart. And the shunt now reverses. And instead of oxygenated blood going from the left to the right, now deoxygenated blood, desaturated hemoglobin, is going to go from the right to the left and end up in the peripheral circulation. And it is the fact that you have desaturated hemoglobin in your peripheral circulation is what makes you cyanose. And it is reckoned that you need five grams of that before you appear blue clinically. We normally have 15 grams per 100 ml. If a third of that is desaturated, you will look blue clinically. The second thing we've done is we've shifted the position of the aorta. The aorta, instead of exiting from the left ventricle as it does normally, it now rides across both ventricles. So that desaturated hemoglobin, desaturated blood, is being pumped directly by the, left, by the right ventricle into the aorta. So pulmonary stenosis will make you blue, but an override in the aorta will help you go bluer. So if you increase the pressure on the right side of the heart, you can reverse this shunt and make our patient blue. And that's what happens with patients with congenital cyanotic heart disease. They have a hole in the heart plus a lesion in and around the pulmonary arteries which stops the blood going into the lungs and therefore shunts across and lands up in the peripheral circulation and make our patient blue.